Welcome back. I know what you're thinking. Where's my super elite gear? Well, you'll see plenty enough of that in game. But today, I'm presenting like this in this level of reality. Speaking of games, what exactly is an MMORPG? Well, that stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role Playing Game. Now, you'll often hear the term MMO, but that can technically include any genre of game that's massively played and online. But what's special about the MMORPG is that role-playing aspect, those two letters in the middle. Because it's the role-playing aspect that allows people to become immersed in the game and create these unique and structured and very deeply connected communities. And that's what we're going to be studying in this class. For brevity's sake, from here on out, I'll refer to the games as MMOs. However, I want to be clear that there are many genres that fall within that definition. Again, talking about sandboxes, Minecraft is a good example. It's full of user-created content, hence this idea that people are playing within a sandbox where they can create what they want. Another version of a massively online game would be mobile battleground arenas. And one of the more popular ones currently is League of Legends. And recently, I had someone tell me that MMOs were dying and that they were being replaced by games such as League of Legends. However, just because one genre reaches a certain level of popularity doesn't mean that people stop paying attention to the other ones. When we had an increase in science fiction and fantasy readership, people didn't stop reading historical fiction or romance novels. That fan base is still there. They're still going, and everything does tend to go in cycles. But once again, it's also a different genre of an MMO. It's not the same thing as an MMORPG. It doesn't have that same rich community where people are making meaning and forming new identities and connecting that meaning to their identities. So where did MMOs get their start? Well, we have to go all the way back to the 70s. In fact, all the way back to 1979 when the first MUD, MUD 1, came out. Yes, your grandparents and parents set the foundation for the games that you play today. They're that old. And those actually had their influence from science fiction and fantasy novels, as well as tabletop gaming such as Dungeons and Dragons. And the influence of Dungeons and Dragons can still be seen in games today with the randomization of looting and combat skills. So think about the idea that those games are dying. Another way that you can debunk that is the fact that according to Massively Overpowered as of 2017, Guild Wars 2 had reached 11 million players. That's a lot of people playing an MMO, and that's just one MMO for them to be dying. They are obviously still going strong. Another good point is that a Kickstarter campaign began for a game called Crowfall a couple of years ago, and it has gained millions of dollars in donations to get this game running. So if these games were dying, if they didn't have a fan base, if they didn't have people who want to play them and adventure with one another in these immersive worlds, you wouldn't have results like that. You wouldn't have numbers like that. These games are still going strong, and they probably will be for a long time because they're more than just games. They're communities. They are living, thriving worlds. It's these living, breathing worlds that we're going to be studying as we embark on this adventure this semester. As we conduct our ethnographies, we're going to go in as anthropologists and we're going to find out what are these 11 million people doing in here? Why did they spend so much time here? How are they making connections? How are they building this meaning? We're going to be looking for that context. We want to make those connections, but we're going to have fun doing it. See you in game.